Hi, I'm Craig Frazier and this is Chris Arpin and we're here at the Cratex Colors Studio in Connecticut. What we're going to do today is uh, do a little hood panel. I had Chris paint this up for, for me right here. And um, we're actually going to mimic the graphics that we did recently on the Hell's Bells Top Alcohol Hydro Boat owned by Tim Campbell. And a uh, very cool boat. Uh, we're going to show you some images of it. Um, in fact, here's one right now. Now we're not going to duplicate the entire paint job on there, but we are going to duplicate every color that's on that boat because guess what, every color on that boat was Createx. Yes, it's the first professional top alcohol hydro or hydro period that is head to tail Createx. The only thing that wasn't Createx was the top coat of clear, which was PPG. I'm not sure which, do you remember what PPG clear was? Top of the line, it's the bad boy one. It's the, uh, if it's a top of the line, then it's the global, the D8152. That was it. Okay, see, he knows. Now, why do I have Chris here? Well, besides being cool and uh, a good friend of mine and an excellent painter, I did not paint that hydro by myself. I worked with Dan Gardner on it, and uh, I did all the layouts and the airbrushing and the pinstriping and the design of it. But Dan pulled the trigger on this stuff. Why? Because he's better at it than I am. And so is Chris. Uh, so I figured Chris paints, paints Porsches all day long. I think he can paint a hydro. Anyway, now the designs on that boat would not fit correctly onto this hood. So I redesigned a little design on the hood. I even incorporated like a little devil popping down there because I did a little devil logo on the boat itself. So uh, th yeah, this is not all computer graphics. It's not all perfect, but uh, it's also in a booth and I took the notes from yesterday and decided to put a little sketch on there. That's all that I need. Uh, so those of you out there saying, oh, I don't, I don't have a computer rendering program. I can't do graphics. No, you can. Just draw on the back of a piece of paper. So the first colors we're going to do on this, are the, we're actually going the same sequence that we did on the actual uh, boat. Now the entire boat was covered in the brand new silver sealer, which is called? Silver sealer. Yeah, see I needed him for that because you know, I got it wrong evidently. Yeah. No, it's the brand new silver sealer from Autoborn, which is seriously sparkly. I mean, yeah. it, you've got to see it to believe it. It is seriously metallic. The entire boat was done in that and then put a coat of clear on top of it and sanded that because we want to go directly on a clear surface. Now the reason being is when you're masking on a metallic, and it doesn't matter if it's water-based, if it's solvent-based, whatever, when you're masking on metallic, raw metallics, your tape will pull up some of that metallic. You may not see it with the naked eye. Guess when you'll see it? When you clear it, it's too late to freaking fix it. So we got a nice coat of clear on here. Had him mimic the exact same thing. On this hood, we got a, you can't really see the sparkle because it's already been sanded, but we've got the sealer on this hood. And then on top of that, we got the clear and I had him sand that for me yesterday. When, if it is fresh clear, do not sand it and immediately start laying tape on it. And I'll tell you why. Fresh clear will be gassing out solvents and they will react with tape. Tape reacts with solvent. And, uh, and they'll create what are considered uh, tape etch lines or tape lines. Some of those may go away when you clear, some of them may not. Also, what you may notice, uh, it, you may not see them when you clear it, but some of those tape lines, when you go back to spray a graphic, even if you pre-cleaned it, all of a sudden the graphic paint will follow those tape lines that you can't see with the naked eye because that glue has actually etched in, into the clear or vice versa, it's drawn it out. So, give it a good day. Mm -hmm. You know, I sand it, and if you sand it, give it a couple hours before you even come in and start laying graphics. If you can smell it, you know, you're, yeah. break, you're breaking the skin of that clear coat, you're going to smell that, that solvent, mm -hmm. just let it, let it do its thing, you know, let it outgas a little bit more, and it's going to save you time in the long run. It's really tempting to jump in and start doing stuff, but trust me, doing things properly mm -hmm. takes a little bit longer in the beginning, but guess what? In the long run, it's a lot longer to go back and fix it. Now, yes. As far as doing the layout on this, uh, I used eighth inch and quarter inch tape on that boat, quarter inch for the wool long lines because eighth inch doesn't like to stretch that, that long. In this situation, we're going to be using uh, just eighth inch because I'm not pulling long lines on it. And it is uh, eighth inch blue, it's called Le Bleu from FBS. Now uh, I go back and forth, I'll use a number of different tapes. I always tell people, you know, it's the right tape for the right job. Some tapes I use a 3M, some tape, I can, what's this? This is. That's uh, from our temporal. This, I didn't even heard of this tape. This is an East Coast tape, yeah. so you know we don't have it on the West Coast. Connecticut, it's Connecticut tape. Connecticut tape. Oh, okay, okay. Now we got yellow tape on the West Coast, but it's actually FBS or, or, or 3M. So I'm going to come in and do the main graphic, the first graphic, which is going to be uh, porn star pink, and it is uh, just a base coat. Um, yeah, but it's got it's got a are... little bit of um, it's got pearl, but it's also it's got, got a pearl some... and a holograph like in it. Yeah. so it's, it's got a cool, effect. very very it's cool like stuff. A pink to purple. It's shift. the outline border one, which we did the same thing on the boat. We did the outline border or the sponsons on the hydro using it. So that outline there, you don't need to mask the out edge because it's the out edge. 
We need to find the center though, which is why if you are a graphic painter, you can be a man and still own a fabric uh, ruler, like a seamstress ruler. I use these things all the time because they don't scratch the paint like a normal ruler does. And all I need to do is find the center and I'm gonna make a little mark on it. And I'm make a mark, I'm not gonna draw a mark, I'm just gonna use a little piece of tape. So I'm gonna find the center actually right up here to there and at 16 inches exactly. And I'm gonna put the tape off of the side and I remember it's on the right side because I'm gonna run it in the center. And then I'm going to do another one on the front here. Whoops, hold on. That's why I have Chris here to pick up the things that I drop because because I, I, I that's how I roll. Uh, we have 15 and a half inches, which is seven and three quarter, off to that one side. And then I can easily bring my tape from here. And you want to continue back there and just line it up, center it up. Oop. Not do that, not do that. So we, inc we include this in here because this is the, the fun, jokey stuff. There we go. It's real world. Real world. Real world problems. Yeah. yeah this would be the successful, uh, yeah, the real, pa real painting lives of New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now I'm not going to, I don't need it all the way down here because I'm actually going to bring the tape up to a point. So I'll snap it off right here. I just need to keep track of what the center is. Um, for the outside graphic, I'm just going to eyeball it. I want enough of the pink to, uh, to be able to see what I'm doing, but at the same time, I don't want so much that uh, I start running out of room for the rest of my graphics. I think about maybe an inch and a half, three quarter or two inches on the side is going to be enough right there. Plus this color really looks nice. It's a cool looking color. And there we go. Now the trick is going to be to mimic that on the other side. Now, if I had a serious complex number of graphics on this side, what I would do is I'd actually pounce it. I'd take a piece of paper, I'd lay it on the center line over here, and I would take uh, basically a, one of those construction crayons, a little orange when you get Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever, rub it over the whole thing, you can do chalk too, and where the tape is underneath will come through on the paper. Then you use what's called a pounce wheel, it's a little wheel that put perforates holes in it and you run it along your, not on the hood, put it on a piece of wood or cardboard, run that on there and it's got little holes now in the entire design. Take the paper and flip it over and use a chalk bag and or you can make a chalk bag out of construction chalk and a sock but you can also buy little chalk things. They can Coast Airbrush sells a number of places to sell them. Chalk the design and then you can mimic it. Now this is a little bit simplistic so I don't need to really do that for this one. It's only one graphic. And by the way, these graphics are not going to be symmetrical. The only symmetrical graphic on this entire piece is this pink one. We're having different colors on both sides. So I'm going to lay it here and what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to look in the center when I'm laying this. And when I look in the center, I slightly unfocus my eyes. And that way it allows my peripheral vision to see the entire design. Now if this helps any, you can also take measurements, take another piece of tape, and what I'll do is I'll take a piece of tape like this, figure out where that is. Oops. And I leave it cut there, and that's that way I know not to go down any further than that line. But I know I need to change this angle a little bit. Cool thing about this little blue is don't press it down hard when you're using it. When, like this line I'm done with, so I'm now I'm gonna, it's called burnishing it. I press it down because it's, it's pressure sensitive. On this one, until I get the design laid out, I don't wanna press it down because it, that means the glue will start transferring and also, uh, it, there's only so many times, I say maybe six or seven times you can reposition the blue tape before it actually starts having issues. Uh, you also want to make sure the surface is nice and clean. What I didn't show you was that we'd already cleaned this surface. Thanks for holding it. Kind of this. Now, you just say, oh, you should measure that. Yeah, I guess I could, but I'm also eyeballing it. Yeah, that's good enough. Now, don't, you know, if it, let's say I'm off about an eighth of an inch. There's some people that would freak out on that. It's the end of the world. Guess what? Pinstripe I'm going to do on this afterwards is an eighth of an inch. I can fudge it. So uh, I'm happy with that. That's cool. Burnish that down. And I've got a nice 
fresh exacto. I'm going to very carefully, I don't want to go into the paint, so I'm very carefully just scoring the blue tape there so I can yank up my center. Now this is going to be back masked using, or just masked using uh, yellow tape and then probably some paper. Uh, if it was a smaller area, I'd just psh, 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 use tape and get it on there. The reason I'm using the fine line, the vinyl fine line tape, instead of using crepe, is we're using a waterborne paint here. Waterborne paint can creep under tapes. Even the, the, the ones like these that are kind of plasticized, these still can creep under paper tape. Vinyl tape has always been, in my opinion, the best graphic layout tape. And then with water base, it is an absolute necessity. So get yourself some. Like I said, you can, there's a number of companies making it. I prefer FBS La Blue. The Orange Pro Band or Orange Tape from FBS is also excellent. The La Rouge Tape from FBS is good, but the downside to it is it's really good for, for things on sensitive paint. Like maybe it's fresh paint, you're kind of worried. It doesn't have a lot of adhesion on purpose. So over large areas, it can lift on you. Now, this is our first color. Now, normally, most people just, we're going to spray this porn star pink. We're going to mask it, and I'll have him do it because I'm lazy. I don't like masking. But um, I'll help a little bit. Um, you do one color, and then you wait, and you unmask. You do another color, you wait, and you unmask. You're wasting some time there. If colors don't touch, you can lay out two at a time. I don't like laying every color out on a design and then having to worry about which one I paint next. I usually will do maybe two at a time. Uh, in some situations, I'll lay them all out if it gets confusing for another painter I'm working with. In this situation, we're going to be actually spraying the two, not simultaneously, but right, right after one another. And I'll show you how we do that without messing up the paint. And. Um, the other color we're going to do on the, is the slotted, this is the porn star pink color, we're going to do a slotted graphic that has some tape shades in it, and that was done using, a, it was a iridescent? Iridescent uh, purple. Iridescent purple. Yep. Very, very cool color, right out of the bottle, I mean a little reducer of course, but right out of the bottle. Mm -hmm. Porn star pink is also right out of the bottle, Createx. These colors are amazing in the sun when you see them, and we will show you this in the sun when it's done. It's very, very cool stuff. So I'm going to come in and lay this graphic in. Now, normally I would kind of follow the um, if I have a body line to play with, like in this situation, I've got this body line in the hood. I am kind of playing with it a little bit, but I'm also breaking against. I hate following every body line. You you have to take the body line into consideration on a vehicle. You do not have to copy it. So I'm saying, you know, acknowledge it and maybe diametrically oppose it, or maybe work with it and then break away from it. Um, you don't want to like if you just completely ignore it, then it it can have some repercussions. I'm going to give a little bit of a gap because I want some of the background color to show through there. And then, so I'm going to follow up the side here, but then this one is going to curve in like that. Now this is called a slotted graphic because it was very popular back in the 90s and in the, in the, in the 80s too. We'll come in and break it up. And I'm going to break it up with about a, a little bit less than an inch gap. And we're going to angle it. Just do two breaks. That's all we need. And what we'll be doing is we're going to be masking all of this, masking this, and painting this, this, and this. But you need to have a sequence. What we're going to do is we're going to mask everything up, but the first thing we're going to paint is going to be the pink. Then we're going to come in and paint the violet. So let's go ahead and mask it up, and we'll come back because uh, it gets kind of, I don't know, should we mask a little bit of it right now? Oh, Honestly, show you guys, yeah. I mean, this is what I'm talking about masking. Now look, I didn't measure it, but I've done this enough times. I'm lazy. I do all of my masking gaps at three quarters of an inch, so I don't have to come in and re-freaking mask it every time. Um, same thing with this little sucker here. It's right at. Now, he starts gapping up here, but see, I'll actually use the tape when I'm coming into an outside curve. I just press it down here. As I come around, I continue pressing switch hands. Curve. You'll say you can't do a curve with three quarter inch tape. Sure you can. Once that outside's done, you just press down the rest and you're good to go. The other piece here, easy peasy, I just need to come around. Come all the way to there, snap it off. Same thing here, make sure it's pressed down. Now this one, I'm doing the opposite curve. So I'm being really careful, I'm pressing the outside edge, and then I press forward this direction. It's a little bit tougher to do an inside curve 
than an outside curve with the masking tape. But you can still do it without having to just keep on cut, 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 cut. I'm not papering that. That's silly. I'm just going to come in and do that. So that's masked. In this area right here, we'll take some paper yep. and mask that. Sending over here. We're not doing the graphic over here. I'll just continue the masking. So uh, when we come back, it'll be all ready to paint and we will wipe it down one more time. Remember I made a comment, make sure you wipe it before you tape it. Um, I don't have it right here, but we have some, uh, and you're using a PPG water, waterborne um, uh, pre-cleaner? What SX, was that? Uh, 394. 394. SX 394 is the water, and then if I'm using a solvent, like once we have base coat, if mm -hmm. we're spraying over base coat, it's water-based, so you don't want to use a water-based cleaner. Yeah. I have to say that quite a bit, so I'll use the 320, uh, SX 320 PPG's product, and it is the least aggressive uh, solvent. This yeah. way you're not, you don't, you, at this point, you shouldn't have oil and all kinds of contamination no. that you worry about. It's just But you dust. never know. You can have so many yeah, fingerprints absolutely. and, and some, you never know. You know, hey, just ate over at McDonald's. Yeah, let's go <laughs> ahead and wipe it down. Um, even if you have gloves on, gloves transfer crap just like yep. your fingers do. So once you'll pre-clean before you mask, and once it's all masked, the areas you're painting, pre-clean again. Yep. You, try, you will not be sad by doing it. Plus, you don't know. Someone could have gone in there and just kind of, you know, you know, when you're gone, you never know. So make yeah. See, <laughs> I clean my nose before I came in here. Um, so that, it's always a good habit to get into. Uh, also, I uh, I use a lot of the Valspar, the AC. I think I remember this AC10 is the the um, aerosol cleaner. The aerosol yeah, yeah. cleaner. Yeah. I used to use that in a rag. Yep. I wipe that down. The the solvent uh, Valspar version. Uh, even the old uh, PPG, uh, the Grow uh, solvent versions, they work fine yeah. on top of Graytex. I've never yeah. had a problem yeah. with it lifting the water base. No. Don't scrub away at it. No. And then you know, I've had people like scrub and say, oh, it's taking off the water base. I mean, if you take solvent-based solvent. pre-cleaner on a solvent paint, you'll take it off too if you scrub yeah. it. So nice to wipe down yeah. all you're doing. And by the way, don't spray it on and let it dry. Yeah, don't let it dry. That's yeah. like jumping in a shower and getting soapy and then, oh, I don't need to rinse because I use soap, I'm clean. And then walk out and actually feel, not feel like crap the rest of the day. When you wipe something down, wipe it off. Yeah. Come on, Cobra Kai. Wipe well, not on, Cobra Kai, Miyagi-Do. <laughs> wipe on, wipe off. Yeah. You know, and then and then Cobra Kai kicks your ass. Yeah, those cleaners are designed to float contamination <laughs> to the surface. So that's that's what you want to do. You don't want to just walk away and let it let it dry on its own because it's going to cause problems. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the biggest failures that people get is not really got some spit on there. Yay! Uh, that's that's about it. So we're going to go ahead and yeah, that's on you. If, if it, you didn't clean it <laughs> yeah. properly, if you left my spit, I just spit it on purpose yeah, to same. test him. So we're going to get this masked off, and the next thing we're going to do is start painting. Okay, as you see, we've got the hood all nice and masked up, and uh, he went ahead and uh, pre-cleaned it yep. with the... Uh, grab it right down there, show it to the people. SX394. SX394. So wiped it all down with that and then wiped it off, and uh, then went ahead and prepped out uh, both colors we're going to be spraying, the porn star pink and the purple iridescent. So what ratio did you mix your paint up at? Uh, I mixed uh, the paint, uh, I like to go uh, four to one, Okay. With our 4050 gloss, mm -hmm. uh, so we go four parts color to one part gloss, and then uh, right around 10, 15 percent reduction with 4011. That's our go-to reducer. Get a nice amount of flow, and this that 4050 helps just with the metallic suspension and helps really bind that paint together because this is very transparent. But yeah. you want to be able to put it down in multiple coats to build up your color, and this just helps. Kind of hold everything together. It gives yeah. it a better, better look overall. We found instead of the 40/30, we, we go anytime we're using a big gun application or spray gun, we, we recommend the 40/50. It just holds it together that much. Gives better. it more, more strength and yeah. stuff. So it allows you to layer it up. Plus, yep. we're going to be doing other layers throughout right. the whole. All the paint. The one commonality between these paints is they all are going to be using the 40/50 yep. as the binder. Right. And then at the very end, after we pinstripe it, we're going to be clearing it using what kind of clear are you going to be using this time? Uh, we'll probably do it with the 40. Uh, no, I'll probably use EC 550. DC 550. We'll talk code okay, DC cool. 550. We'll talk a little bit about that later. But uh, and then, what gun are you using right now? Uh, just for this, because it's smaller. This is an LPH 80. Uh, this is the E4 air cap. It's a one two. So that's kind of for okay, setting so this size. You want it's a LPH 80. Yep. Um, uh, one of my guns of preference when doing small graphics, helmets and stuff. It's a great little mini gun. Yeah. Um, I mean, it throws anyway, a nice fan and you can dial it in yeah. really small and do a lot with this gun. So and even though this paint is waterborne, you still want to use a respirator. So yep. he's got a dual cartridge uh, respirator uh, for inorganic vapor, organic vapors. Uh, N95 for all you COVID fans. Um, and this one's even cooler because it scares the hell out of people in restaurants. It does. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and walk out of here and turn the booth on and it'll get noisy and he's going to go ahead and spray some coats on that. So uh, we will see you back in a second. 
All right, guys, we're ready to spray. This is the Porn Star Pink, and we're probably gonna do three coats. This color is pretty transparent, so uh, standard procedure putting on a 50% overlap. I'm right around 15 PSI on my gun, so we'll do one coat, let that tack off, probably flash about 10 minutes, and we'll do our second or third, depending on how the coverage is, but probably three coats is what it's gonna take. Guys, we got three coats on here. Uh, I said I was going to do three, but we're going to do one more just to make sure it's nice and even. Uh, this color is a little transparent by nature. We still want that uh, sealer silver to show through. I just want to make sure this is kind of just a nice, quick little even coat just to make sure everything's nice and it looks good. We're going to let that dry up and then we're going to go on to the purple. So, this is the last finishing coat. Okay, now Chris has already sprayed, uh, how many coats of this porn star pink did you put uh, on here? It was three coats to really get good coverage, and then I just did one just to make sure it was nice and even. So okay. just a fourth, just for... Now even with the good coverage, the silver metallic is still going to come through in the sun. Mm -hmm. That's the cool oh, thing sure. about this yeah. color. It is a translucent color. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to cover primer spots, no, won't work. Come in, get everything even underneath. So whatever base you put under, underneath this porn star pink will affect it. Could you spray it over black? Yeah, it doesn't mean a very dark, dark. Still be pearly, still have that little holographic sparkle to it, but uh, it is base determinant. It is not a candy, but it is candy-like in the right. way it sprays. Matter of fact, uh, if you can spray this paint, you can also spray candies. So it's just, you know, you have to kind of keep track. Like he said, he knew how many coats he put down. If you're doing multiple items, be very, very careful. If you forget one item, it will appear lighter yep. uh, if it has one coat less. Now, remember, we had the graphic under this side right here. So I already started pulling up some of the tape. Now, this is fairly fresh, but it's still, it feels fresher on the paper because the paper absorbs more water. But um, it's still uh, okay to work on. Now, I would not tape directly on it at this point, but we're not having to worry about that. Uh, we're actually going to peel the paper back over it and drape the paper in this situation. Well, I'll just kind of pull this tape up here, get it out of the way. But we'll take this paper we already had here. Here, go ahead and get the bottom of that for me. Yeah, and then just fold the paper over like that and just leave a little bit so we can get to, I want to make sure we don't, it's not affecting the paint right there. Let's pull a little bit more. There we go. And we'll tape, and then what we're going to tape is just tape on this surface right around here. We'll paper this area and just drape paper on the, you know, on the paint. Paint's still fresh, it'll tack a little bit. I mean, if you really want to wait, you can wait an hour mm -hmm. and you can come in. This is an hour, this is literally like maybe 15 minutes yeah, at 15, the most. 15. So we're going to go ahead and tape and paper this up, and, uh, and I'll show you what we're going to do. We'll just give me a piece real quick. I just want to get this so it doesn't fall back on me. Now, on the boat, I wanted some extra effects. Actually, Tim Campbell, the owner of the boat, his whole specific was I want a lot of effects, a lot of airbrush, and a lot of cool stuff on the boat. So he loves tape shades, old candy boat trick. Anyone that knows boat painting knows the, like a lot of linear tape shades. So what I ended up doing was, uh, on his boat, the graphic was a little bit bigger. I used three quarter inch tapes. This is a smaller scale graphic. We're gonna use uh, this half inch right here. And um, it's actually FBS. And it says Pro Bend here. I'm always used to this one being La Rouge, and La Rouge has a little bit less tack. Now, there's no paint on here, I'm not worried about that, but this is just going to be an effect taping. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and tape approximately the same distance from the side and come all the way along here, following the graphic, and then end it right there. Now, you can snap it, or if you want, just do a kiss cut. You know, just put drop the blade there and then lift it up. Um, this one right here is going to be a little bit over, a little bit more. I want to kind of balance it out between the sides. And I'll have it come up a little bit narrower in the front. Nah, about the same actually. There we go. I kind of talk to myself when I paint. Hey, everyone does. As long as you listen. Or I've just, pretty much, or just pretty much isolated myself as being the only one that does. <laughs> Nothing wrong with the voices. just depends on if you do whatever they say. That's right. If you ignore them, you're fine. Okay. 
I always tell people, I always ignore the voices, and then it's like, you know, my partner Dion and my wife is like, yeah, you do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. There you go. Now, these right here, we're going to leave on here for um, what's going to be the first couple of coats that he's going to put on. Then we're going to lift them up and we're going to do just a, a fade from the bottom on this uh, to give an overall look. So it'll be kind of cool looking. Um, and that's about it as far as our tape shade effect that we have for this graphic. I'm going to have Chris go ahead and finish masking this all up and then we'll have it back on the easel and we will be spraying the ooh, purple iridescent that we've already had mixed up and sitting. And by the way, I don't know if I mentioned it in the Porn Star Pink, uh, when you mix it up, and he mixed it up with a 40-50, and then what was the ratio again, four to one? Four to one. Four to one, and that's four parts? Four parts uh, paint. To one part. One part. Yeah. We didn't yeah, mention yeah, that. Yeah. You will be doing yeah. a million coats yeah. if you do it the other way around. Uh, you, so four parts paint, one part of the 4050, yeah. and then about 10 to 15 percent of the 4011. 20. Once it's all stirred up really well, you let it sit. 15 minutes, at least 15 minutes. Um, don't let it sit like three or four hours, that's silly. But 15 minutes is important, and trust me, it is a different animal when you do that. Uh, mm -hmm. Sprays much better, lays flatter, mm -hmm. and uh, just your life will be better. Yep. And so it's 15 minutes, go have a sick break, I don't know, whatever you, whatever floats your boat, 15 minutes. So he's gonna mask this off, that's how it's 15 minutes, and then uh, we're gonna come in and start spraying the purple graphic. Okay, Chris has got this all masked up, ready to spray. He's got his paint and his gun, uh, the, the purple, purple iridescent. Yep. And uh, same way, four to one, yep. with the 10 to 15% reduction. Let it sit 15 minutes. Now, the reason I have the spray up part here, what Chris is gonna do is the way this tape shade works is the red's masking off the silver. So he's gonna come in first and do a blend of uh, darker violet, or darker, darker purple here, faded out to light here, so dark light. Then he goes dark light again to protect the light area there he's gonna use the card not touching the paint but use the card and go dark light dark light then dark light dark light now you may be thinking oh but he's doing this he'll get some over here it's okay if overspray gets there because that's going to be dark so it's dark light then dark light to protect the light dark light he's gonna do like two passes of that and give me an even gradated fade which works out very nice for the LPH 80 mm -hmm. could you also do this with an airbrush you could, but you may get some streaks once you unmask it, because what we're gonna do is, we're gonna do that dark light, dark light, dark light, then he's gonna come in and peel all three of these off, and then do dark light, card again, dark light, dark light, and, but spraying the whole thing. So the underlying one that we sprayed first is gonna get even darker. So he's gonna end up, like this stripe will end up getting four coats, whereas this one's only gonna get two two coats, so it'll be even lighter, so it'll be like a double tape shade system. I'm not gonna be in here, so I don't have to, the reason I talked about it all ahead of time, the booth's gonna be going, you're not gonna hear anything anyway. So, uh, that's about it, I turn the card over to you, and uh, I'm gonna go outside and, and mix paint, so, later. guys that first session of shading is all done so I'm gonna pull my tape and I'm gonna go back and do the exact same thing what I'm probably gonna do is do one light coat over all of it just to get this a little bit darker and then that reveal is gonna be lighter and then I'll come back and do the exact same thing so I'll go dark on the top dark on the top dark on the top Guys, 
I did that first pass on everything just to give a nice even color. Now I'm going to go back and do the exact same thing like Craig said. I'm going to just darken the top, darken the top, darken the top to get that nice even fade. So this is basically the last step before we untape this one.